Welcome to the Out There channel. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Note you have to click on the little bell symbol to get notifications of new video postings. In this episode I'm going to talk about some things I found very interesting on the internet. Have you ever thought about where food comes from? Now it's quite easy to think about you're eating plants and animals, but what do they eat and so on and so on? Well, everything comes from the sun in the form of energy. Without the sun, everything on earth would die. So there must be a limit to how much food the earth can produce based on how much radiation from the sun is absorbed by microbes and plant life on the planet. Looking at this chart you can see the sun loses a massive amount of energy every hour 10 to the power of 23 uh, watts of power which is a huge amount of energy and only so much of that would be absorbed by the earth and converted into other forms of energy. They also equate that to a, a 15 billion tons of mass that's losing each day so the sun in theory should be shrinking but when you got planet sized meteorites or asteroids plowing into the sun you think it would be increasing its mass as well and we don't know how many of these objects are plowing into the sun and um, that brings another question is why we haven't heard about these planet sized asteroids entering the solar system and plowing into the sun because maybe they didn't know it happened until after the fact so that means any of these objects could vary the sun's energy output and change the sunspots and all that sort of stuff and then in turn affect how much energy the earth absorbs and converts back into food so there's got to be a breaking point somewhere where the human population gets too big and uh, exceeds the food production or energy production that it can handle. Pretty scary thought. So not only meteorites could destroy the earth, but they also could affect the sun, which in turn could ruin life on earth. As you can see by the world population clock, it's gradually creeping closer to the 8 billion people on the planet's surface and the birth rate is outstripping the death rate as you can see. This brings me to the topic of the Georgia Guidestones. Apparently someone went to a bank manager who asked for secrecy on the building project of this stone structure and on the structure are several languages that all say the same thing about reducing the human population to 500 million to be in compliance with nature. Now the banker won't reveal who funded it and who's behind it and uh, maybe he's been threatened, maybe he was paid pretty well but uh, still no one knows who's behind it. Some say it's the Freemasons because there's a compass symbol with the G on the statue well stone block and maybe they're behind this idea of a new world order one government one rule for everybody okay time for a subject change first off I'm going to talk about sedimentary rock because it's going to lead into the other topics of weirdness to follow here it says it's a build up of minerals and debris from plant life uh, to form a rock a good example to show it building up is um, dinosaur fossils. As you can see it's at least 10 meters above the dinosaur layer. That's a lot of material to build up over 300 million years. It's hard to get your head around where all that material is coming from though. They're saying it's formed at the bottom of the sea, uh, rivers, mud runoff, sandstone, uh, plant material dying, animals dying. Uh, wind and erosion blowing it around and eruptions lifting it back up from the sea and then more layers being added and dropped back into so yeah it's all sort of crazy stuff to get your head around 
and then that also leads into the theory of expanding Earth. They say only 50, what is it, 50 million tons of matter is lost every year. Correction, that's um, 50,000 tons per year. However, they claim it's 40,000 tons of stardust or meteorites that enter the Earth's atmosphere every year. So that's quite a fair bit. So this leads us into the next subject of fossil fuels. Those are crude oil, coal, natural gas. And you can see here by the government website, they talk about it being made from animals and plant life and microorganisms. Now, the following websites are dismissing these claims because they found oil on Titan and natural gas on various planets. And that means there must have been life for it to form. And it may not be the case. It may be that it's created from the Earth's mantle. So perhaps we need to rewrite our science theories again. I included this section on methane gas and natural gas because they're both interrelated and they're both produced from uh, organic means and yet we find methane on planets. Then you got the mystery of so much carbon in the universe and of course fuel is mostly carbon based and of course rocks and earth and mantle and earth's core all consist of carbon and also iron and other minerals. I don't know about you, for many years like in the 70s they were talking about the oil crisis that we're going to run out before, well, today. <laughs> According to these sites, the oil fields that had been dry are naturally refilling again. Of course, some skeptics say it's because cracks open up underground and leaks from other areas underground into the old uh, drill holes. Here's a site talking about the lies about the oil running out and the oil crisis and putting up prices and... Um, why the wars in the Middle East are occurring, which is quite an interesting read, so I'll let you have a read of that. Here's an example of oil bubbling up from under the ground. That's how they initially discovered it. This brings us back to sedimentary rock again in the form of coal this time, which is made from plant matter. As you can see in the following websites, it will be dismissed um, because they've got a vein of coal that runs through millions of years of layers as well as um, saying that because it had fossils in the coal doesn't mean that it's a fossil fuel and made by trees decaying. And then we got this famous case of a coal mine that's been burning for like 92 years and people asking how it's getting oxygen to keep it going. And of course it's causing cracks on the surface and houses are... Uh, uh, having to be moved, evacuated.
So the experts here claim that it's caused by cracks uh, in the rock wall and going to the surface as it's sinking, as it's burning, allowing more oxygen to fuel, fuel the flames. And of course it's burning at uh, 1200 degrees Fahrenheit or 1000 degrees Celsius or whatever it is. Now here's the mystery, we've got gold mines that go into 4 miles underground but you also got coal mines going deep underground to that same level. Now how does all that plant matter get that deep? I'll let you read that and let you pause if you need to. Um, some interesting read in there about debunking it. Fossil fuel is real or not. Uh, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not a member. And talk about it more in the comments. Until the next episode, stay safe guys and see you then.